Welcome to Talking Giants presented by SeatGeek. I'm your host, Bobby Skinner, here with my co-host, Justin Pennick, And we got some training camp updates. Plus, we have Jordan on on the podcast later. We had him in the van. Uh, we got to talk about the swing tackle position. We're going to talk about the offensive at whole and a couple uh, a couple minor moves the Giants made. And we're getting ready for Fan Fest. Justin, how you doing after uh, a few days uh, since our last episode? Good catch. Bobby Skinner. Everyone in our Patreon chat and you listening at home, at work, wherever you may be. The Giants offense is starting to look better. I know our Friday show or even maybe even our Tuesday show was talking about how maybe it's not looking too great. All these practice streams and shows and interviews are all blending together by now. Tuesday's show was after the worst day of practice. Then let's talk about how the offense is looking better and I'm excited. I screamed after Kenny Gall. They caught a contested catch on the sideline. I screamed Jason Garrett is a war criminal and then the Giants had a really good play the next play and then I screamed the Giants are back, which they are. Patreon's back. We got Dan Orlando. We got Stephen McCarthy. From Orlando? Uh, yeah, he actually is. That's not even... I Dan Orlando's I, from New Jersey. I didn't, I didn't make that up. He's McCarthy's from Orlando. from Orlando. Stephen McCarthy. Brennan Danick, who's in our chat right now. J.C. Upton reminds me of the, the Upton twins in baseball. Justin Upton. Michael Apter. Not after. After, like a raptor. Brian Formerhring. Mm. Makes me think of like some chemical from Breaking Bad that create meth. And then just Eric. Um, Eric the Bike Man. Justin, who are these people? These wonderful people went to patreon.com slash talking giants. Two dollars a month plus some other tiers. You get to hang out with us and watch shows while we record them live. Bobby Skinner will send you some stickers, magnets <clears throat> in the mail when he gets home um, in Florida. And twice a month, you are entered into shirt raffles. Patreon.com slash talking giants. Thanks to our patrons. All right, so we got to talk about the swing tag. We got to talk about some smaller moves, but I want to start talking. You know, like the theme of the last couple of days since we've been, uh, since we've recorded a regular podcast in training camp. And that's the offense is improving, you know, passing game and running game. You know, Monday was an emphasis on running. Tuesday and Wednesday, they mix it up a little bit. Uh, the, last pra- the last two practices since that podcast, Daniel Jones has completed 25 of 30 passes, which has been really good. They've, Pretty good. They've looked crisp. The running game has looked good. And I think that's <clears throat> one defense can start ahead of offense in camp. But I also, something I've been talking about with other people is that it's got to be a weird dynamic. And I probably said this in some interviews on the podcast that it's a weird dynamic for the offense where they're facing one of the toughest defenses to face, regardless of how good the talent is on the defense. Facing Wick Martindale's defense is tough. It's a lot to process and, and play, uh, you know, po- uh, you know, pre-snap and post-snap because they're throwing so many different looks at you. And it's also not an NFL defense that you're going to face every Sunday. Like Patrick Graham's defense, the type of stuff that he ran the last two years, especially when he's... You see more of that than this. Yeah, especially when he ran more too high in 2021. That's the type of things that most teams are doing. So, you know, now now the things that are entering in the back of our brain is, yeah, it looks... It's great that they're playing an aggressive defense and 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 they're succeeding against that, but it's not what a lot of NFL defenses are doing. Well, and part of it is... You know, like some of the struggles, and again, I, I'm not expecting this offense might probably good chance it struggles a lot during the season. I don't think it's going to struggle like the last couple of years, but it will have struggles during the season. But they're also not game planning, so they're not game planning for a Wink Martin de- Wink Martindale defense, which is already yeah. tough enough when you're game planning it for. They're not game planning, but since they've gone to some more normal drills, they just a lot of two minute on Tuesday and then on Wednesday was just like regular. We're moving the ball up and down the field. They've looked good again. DJ 25 or 30. Um, uh, one pick, which it would have been an obvious sack, but still bad. And then the second pick yeah. was really bad in, in the red zone. But outside of that, again, he's he's had five incompletions over the last two days. And the run game has looked really good. Yeah, I want to get your thoughts on this. Typically, when you play against a defense that blitzes a lot, you would tend to think that that opens up some opportunities deep down the field, right? Whether it's somebody running one-on-one, you know, somebody, you know, you have a guy that's fast like Kadarius Tony, Wanda Robinson, that maybe gets in front of one of these DBs and secondary guys. We haven't seen from the first team, we haven't seen that big, deep passing attempt yet. At least I don't think. Playing Wink Martindale's defense, like... That's, uh, that's my observation. We haven't seen that yet, and that's tip. And we like to say, because we're not game planning, what do you think about that? You get that? the opportunity for sideline throws, like the one that Kenny Gall did. Yeah. You get the opportunity for that, but like big busted plays, well, you got to protect against it. You know, and there was a nice, like, uh, crossing route, you know, for CJ Board on one day, where yeah. it would have been like a, you know, it was caught at about like 15 yards of depth, probably would have been like a 30 yeah. or so yard play. 
and that was like a really well protected play versus the blitz and the, you know you can hear an entertainer's video I'll say that's what happens when you protect against yeah. the blitz so. but they are running a lot of this underneath stuff in the intermediate part of the field and when you're playing heavy man coverage when you're playing press like Wink Martindale wants to that stuff isn't always going to work so that's why in my brain it's uh, it's kind of weird that we haven't seen the deep passing attempt yet the one that's made me go oh or made me stand up from my seat but like you said they're not game planning for wink martindale's defense and tony's had you know tony had one down the sideline you know say i'm talking Wheel. in the middle of the field yeah i mean who rather than like a you know they're uh, not using one back that shoulder way. yeah they're, yeah they, they're not they using could use wandale, wandale, that, way. wandale that way right on now. a post yeah um so but it's, it's been good to see the offense make progress obviously just as a football and, and fan of the giants you would you'd rather see the offense do better than than the defense yeah. because you know that's that's more important um, and the running game improving has been really nice too since in in these kinds of practices usually you're not having a takeaway from a practice saying that the running game worked well today and i'm taking more away from that the passing game because i'm not going to take two games of the passing game being good after you know, coming off of like two days that were really bad and a couple of mid days in between there. And I'm like, oh, see, the Giants offense passing game is going to be great. I'm not saying that. But what I will say and take away is that the running, running the ball, the Giants will be able to run the ball. They're opening up more holes. And that's something we talked about with Saquon is he's going to be playing behind the best run blocking offensive line he's ever played before. And Saquon is, has his burst. He's got his, he has his explosiveness and he's like he's got some space to move. You know, like we haven't seen the Saquon Juke sit five, six play uh, guys play, but he's also not had to do that. You know, right. and, and I think that's that will help with some of his his own issues of uh, being hesitant behind the line of scrimmage or dancing or being two yards in the hole and stopping and wanting the jump cut instead of just putting your shoulder down and getting those two, three yards. So um, it, it's it, the running game looks like it's going to be better. And you think about it. Thomas is a fine run blocker. Lemieux is a, a big upgrade over Matt Skura. Uh, John Feliciano hasn't been pr- John Fel- I actually want to talk about Feliciano in a second. Let's do it. Um, Jameel Douglas, I, I want to say he's better than Billy Price. But when Shane Lemieux was in there, it did look better. And Azuda and then Glowinski is better than um, who was uh, Will Hernandez and then Evan Neal better than Nate Soldier, obviously. So he's got better blockers in front of him. Compa- and, you know, a year off of that ACL injury, Which usually he does looks better. Good for guys, the yeah. offensive line looks better. And it's like, okay, you know what? This run game is going to create some explosive, uh, explosive plays this year. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the offensive line, Feliciano, and some other stuff. So Feliciano finally came back. He didn't work a full day. Um, he did work one-on-one drills, and he had the be- he he looked good. Like Dexter Lawrence was leaning on him, bam, bumps you know dumps the hands, gets on him, you know, nice snatch and trap. So he it was just one-on-ones. That's the only time we saw Feliciano, and any like you know full speed uh, practice. He wasn't practicing in eleven eleven, but it was nice to see Feliciano come back and in the limited time he was there. Um, do that, and I, I'm I'm full blown conspiracy theory. Like, to, for to miss a week and now over a week of team drills, it had to be more than a dehydration issue after one day of practice. Like, I don't know what it was, if it was uh, COVID, some other sickness, but I, I'm full blown conspiracy theorist. Like that, John Feliciano was not dealing with solely a hydration issue. Yeah, ho- hopefully it's over. And the main takeaway from you know the five six days that the Giants were without him is that especially the starting offensive line, was not operating as efficiently, as effectively, and in the same way that it was with John Feliciano in the lineup. Is that John Feliciano is a good center? Is that the, the, the depth that we have is not very good? Is it John Feliciano just knows the offense and he's calling out protections and he's kind of keeping everybody in the loop? Um, I, I don't know, but, I mean, just the fact remains that the offensive line is better with John Feliciano in there, and it was better by a decent gap. When he didn't play in any team drills, but when, sh- like, just better than Jameel, like, when you put Shane Lemieux, who's never really played center before, this is the new offense. I guess he was the only exception to that. Yeah. Um, you know, like, Jameel Douglas. So, Feliciano hasn't competed in any 11 on 11 drills yet. So, we ha- we've yet to see Full that. Full pad at 11 on 11, yeah. Yeah, but it, when they did the one on ones, it's like, okay, this guy's kind of a savvy player. He might not be the best player, but he's a, he's a savvy player in John Feliciano. Um, so that that was good to see. Even 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 if Shane Lemieux was to start at center, which is not going to happen, I do not see that happening. Feliciano being back and have being you know like we need depth. Like yeah, we're, and we're going to talk about that right now. When I'm and move the depth over. is not good. Well, let's talk about swing tackle because this is 
become what was already not good to like a full blown issue with the giant swing tackle position because Matt G- Matt Gano went to the left slash exempt list, which essentially means he's kind of debating retirement. I, I know he went to uh, a doctor today, so yesterday when you're listening to this, so there, I guess there might be some news back. We know he came back from that neck injury in Atlanta that caused him to miss the entire year, like miss all of camp, like came in the camp with it, miss the entire year coming off coming off of that. So. It, it's, it seems like he might be heading towards retirement. Like most of the times when, when guys are put on this list, they do retire, but it gives you a small window to add somebody without having to cut him. And obviously nobody can come and claim him on that list. But our, when we did our Camp Battles podcast, there was three guys battling for that swing tackle pos- position. Matt Gano, now most likely gone. And even if he was here, he wasn't the best option. Matt paired on Pup. We have no idea if he'll be ready for week one. And even if he is ready for week one, he's not a, a good player. And he's coming off of an injury and didn't get any training camp. And then Corey Cunningham was cut on the first day of camp because he yeah. had a non-football injury uh, coming into Well, camp. I, in my brain, I added Josh Zudu to that backup swing tackle list. But you just didn't want to put him there. Well, he's a guard. Like, like is, is well, Josh I mean, Zudu... But Josh Azudu, That's what's happening, you know? Okay, but Josh Azudu <laughs> is the 67th overall pick to play guard eventually for this New no, York and Giants. I, and so I agree he might with be you. a swing tackle for one, two, three games, but that can't be the option for the Giants because guess what? If a guard goes down, I mean, they're, they're backup sec- their second team offensive tackles where there are two guards they drafted yeah. and Josh Azudu and Roy Impetica was also getting second team like, tackle. They there. have to bring somebody else in. They do. I know it's, it, it's, you're not going to find anybody good, but you have to bring someone else in there. And not even for if one of the tackles goes down, but Josh Azudu has to practice guard. Like, he is not going to play tackle in the NFL, and specifically with, not with the New York Giants. I don't want to care. I don't care about versatility. He needs to work at guard. And pass sets and the run game, are tackle, a tackle and guard are totally different. Okay, if we had some five, six-year vet who had that versatility, Josh Azudu seven years down the road, yeah. Like, hey, we, you know, we can pop him out to tackle and put the next backup guard in. But that's not what should be happening with, with the Giants' backup offensive tackle spot right now. So they're not going to get some good option, but it, there has to be something other than yeah. just Josh Azuda and Marcus McKeithen. Yeah, and you, you know I agree with you. I, I'm just saying that, you know, it, it's time to say that this could be a realistic option for the Giants this year, whether you agree with it or disagree with it. It's just what's happening. Josh Azuda has gotten probably just as much, if not more, reps at tackle this camp than guard. Um, it probably is going to be one of those situations, and for my own mental health for the next few weeks, it probably is just going to be one of those situations of either after the initial cut-down day or when rosters go down to 53, somebody else is going to come in here. Yeah, somebody will eventually have to come in here, but you also have to think about, like, you have to play guys develop, in You have to develop your rookies, yeah, too. Develop you know? your rookie and play somebody in preseason. But again, if if one player goes down on at all five spots on the New York Giants offensive line, right now, Josh Azu do is the guy first guy coming in yeah if Feliciano goes down if Lemieux moves over to center Zudu the guard yep if guards go down Azuda's going the guard tackles go down Azuda's going the tackle you just can't you can't do that it's for let alone going into the season because guess what maybe these guys all stay healthy or maybe they have one injury but there's a good chance there might be a game where there's two injuries you know, you had Lemieux miss all of last year. Happens. Feliciano missed games last year. Thomas missed games last year. You know, and, and so it's just you got to bring um, some stuff in there. Now, that being said, people have floated the idea of Tevin Jenkins. Slayton for Tevin Jenkins plus so maybe a, a late round, a day three pick. I am kind of on the no Tevin Jenkins list, and I know that might sound surprising because you liked I love Tevin Jenkins' film coming out of Oklahoma State. Um, you know, he played right tackle for them. There's an option, you know, possibility of him moving the guard. But I talked with Robert Smith the other day, and there's just too many red flags for me to want to buy on Tevin Jenkins, okay. unless it's like a sixth or a seventh rounder or something like that. Not not a package of Slayton and a pick. I'd, I wouldn't give up Slayton for Tevin Jenkins. Oh, I feel okay. like I feel like Tevin Jenkins would most likely be a waste. One. He's a new coaching staff, and supposedly Eberflus and them are kind of hard asses and maybe not see eye to eye with Ryan Poles. But guess what, dude? You're second year in the NFL. Like, you don't get the luxury of not seeing eye to eye with a guy. Like, you got to show up and play. Um, and, again, they've they, they, it's like a big conspiracy theory in Bears land because the Bears won't reveal what it was. And then there's, they're saying, well, it's for injury-related purposes. But there's not all this smoke because of that. And also, he has back injury problems. He had it at Oklahoma State. Yeah. He missed a lot of games last year. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trading That's anything tough. besides a seventh or a sixth-round pick for a tackle with back injury, that cons- chronic back problems. I'm not doing that. And, and a guy that's not proven. 
you know, and Tevin Jenkins. Would be one thing if we were training for a guy that's proven. So as much as I loved watching Tevin Jenkins, he's a mean son of a bitch when he's out there on the field. Son of a bitch. But the the way the the smoke coming out of Bears camp and the fact that he's dealing with so many back issues, I'm not giving up more than a six round pick. And even then, I'm not in love with it because I think it's and I think end of the day it'll probably be a waste with with Tevin. All right, so off the Tevin Jenkins train, can we read an ad before we do some other stuff? Yeah, we'll read an ad. DraftKings, don't bet on Tevin Jenkins being a giant. No. Turn big league action into big winnings with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Right now, new customers can bet just five dollars in any game, get one hundred dollars in free bets instantly. Plus, all customers can combine multiple bets for a shot at even bigger payout with DraftKings Same Game Parlays. At DraftKings Sportsbook, you'll be able to bet on your favorite batter to hit a double, his next plate appearance, your favorite pitcher's next pitch to be a strike, and so much more. Julian, what are you betting on the Hall of Fame game tonight? Oh, true. Raiders minus one first half. Raiders minus one first half. Okay. You're an idiot. It didn't hit. We'll see. Either Ju- it's either Julian's what what did we lie about and acted like I really think oh was the, didn't a sixteen seed beat a one seed this year in the in the NCAA tourney last year St. Peter St. Peter's University yes Saint, yeah I, I we so we knew the result of that but I acted oh, like I have breaking I, news oh wait finish the ad read. <laughs> DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code JOHNBOY. New customers can make any $5 bet and get $100 in free bets instantly. That's promo code JOHNBOY only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And trademark trademarks used with permission. Oh, I did a Bobby Skinner, and I checked Twitter to see if there was any news uh, when he was reading the ad. Uh, Jordan Ronan. <laughs> ESPN. Uh, we're going to talk to him later. Giants offense tackle Matt Gano likely has career-ending neck injury per source. Felt good early at camp, but started to feel symptoms in neck, which needed surgery last year when hitting started this week. Gano left to see the doctor who performed surgery, hence exempt slash left squad designation. So Matt Gano, probably gone. Yeah. Matt, so like we said before, Matt Gano is gone. Um, some other news. Uh, with Dane Belton going down, the Giants added a couple DBs. One guy has actually played. Uh, I got some stuff on him. The Giants waived Jaron Williams and signed Jared Wilson. Tough. Jared Wilson is 28 years old, six foot two, 210 pounds, so a big, long safety. Uh, started 33 games in his career, including 28 in 2019 and 20 for the Jags. So not very good teams. Um, had three picks and seven pass deflections in those seasons. He played mostly deep, though. Okay. 59% of the reps there, uh, box 25% and the nickel 60, 16%. Now the Jets, when he played for them, they use him more as like in the box and blitzing. Um, in fact, he had a really nice sack on, on Josh Allen, um, like a, a nice big hit. So, uh, again, safety depth is thin. It was thin coming in the camp. Dane Belton goes down. They've been running Andrew Adams as the third team or, or the, the third safety when they run those three safety sets. But the difference is that – McKinney's gone deep. He's been playing like that center fielder, and Adams has played down towards the box. Um, when Belton was in there, they had Belton playing the deep uh, part of the field. So I've seen I, Adams play deep, too. Yeah, but mostly McKinney has – I'm saying when they get that single high. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. McKinney has been the deep, the deep safety with the first team when they run the, specifically the three safety sets. Um, so I, I wonder if this is like a, hey, like we want to bring this guy in. He's played a lot in the NFL. He's, you know, started a ton of games. Um, had some times where he was graded kind of highly um, by his peers. Uh, so I wonder if it's like, hey, we want a guy who can play of that free safety role more than Andrew Adams could in three safety sets. And, again, this is a position – that after Xavier McKinney and Julian Love and then Dane Belton, it's wide open for that fourth guy to be and, and possibly for week one to be the third safety and get run. So I think Jared Wilson has just as good a chance as Andrew Adams as making this roster. Yeah, Yusuf Corker and definitely Trenton Thompson haven't been getting the run like, you know, maybe, maybe we thought. Um, I know Yusuf Corker has been used more than Thompson but just haven't seen anything. But there was a pass deflection that Corker had in the back part of the end zone. There was, a, there was an interception that Thompson had um, with the second or third team. But besides that, haven't, haven't seen them much. So, Yeah, and then they also signed Nate Metters. Um, so I guess no one's going to be waived because Matt Gano's probably gone. He, yeah. he, he's basically never played in the NFL. All right. He's been targeted twice in his career, and he gave two catches and one was a touchdown. But – Bounce, bounce around practice squads uh, with the Jags and, and the Vikings. So another guy from the Jags. So again, they're, they're very thin, and they just need bodies to get through camp. So hopefully we're going to be finding some tackles to get through camp because right yeah. now they have 
like you said, the, they have the two the two guards they drafted out of UNC and Roy Ambatika, who has never played competitive a competitive game of football in his life out of Nigeria, um, who I, you should never like. I love that program, but you should re- you should honestly never expect him to play. No. If he does, it's an awesome story. It's one of my favorite things ever, and I love the program, even if a guy never plays. Like Sandro Platzgamer will never play. I still love the program. I think it's something good that the NFL does, but you can't be relying on Roy and Batika, and, on, and we shouldn't be relying on Devery Hamilton to be our swing tackle. So no. it's, it's, it's an issue. Like It should not be swept under the rug for the swing tackle position because if one of those guys goes down, that's an extremely important position that can nuke this offense if you have just the worst product out there. It can yeah. nuke the offense from having doing anything productive. So um, swing tackle to me is more – it's like – is like pri- should be priority number one for the Giants right now. Yep, I agree. Even if yeah, I know I hate that it's you might have to do what Dave Gettleman did last year, but if there's somebody that you have to trade a six or do a <laughs> six and fifth pick swap, there it has to be a just because you can't go through a year with just Josh Azuti's just swing tackle. It's very different when Dave Gettleman is doing to find to find like a starting guard and a starting center. Like th- th- those two things are very different. Uh, but I mean, it, e- it easily can turn into one of those situations if you have one of your starters go down. And, and I think that's your point. You know, we're talking about, you know, the, the need for a swing tackle because we are one play, one moment away from being in a very similar spot that we were last year. And again, so. if it's Andrew Thomas that goes down who had an injury last year, Evan Neal has struggled a little bit in camp. So you move him over to left tackle. So there's no guaranteeing that Evan Neal is going to be a really good player his rookie year. So if he's having some struggles, and then your right tackle is just the worst pro- the worst person at his position in the NFL, I'm telling you, it, it will turn things sour. It will be hard to run what you want to do and grow and get better as a team. You know who's out there as uh, free agent? Don't say. Uh, Mike Remmers. Someone floated Mike Remmers. I think he might still be available. Like, Mike Remmers would be someone that is could be a possible option. Like, is, is Mike Remmers a free agent? I was thinking the starting right Yeah, he's a free agent. Like Mike Remmers. No, yeah, I know that's who you were thinking of, and I don't want to say his name. <laughs> Mike Remmers should be someone that comes out there. Oh, Mike Remmers does suck. Okay, but Mike Remmers has played offensive tackle in the NFL for a long time. Started in a couple Super Bowls. Got his ass beat in a couple Super Bowls, but, you know, like he was better than what that guy you just uh, – you, you, The starting right tackle from last year? Yeah, like he was better than him when they were the starting tackles in 2019. So a guy like Mike Remmers should be, be being uh, considered right now. So. Yep. Um, in fact, I might tweet that out later. So sign Mike Remmers. Hashtag. Seriously, like it, 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 something has to, something has to be done. So uh, why don't you read an ad and we'll, we'll send it to Jordan Renan of yeah, ESPN. Yeah, we'll send it to Jordan Renan on ESPN and cue the ESPN signature sound. Uh, uh, Manscaped wants me to do 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 do. Fellas, it's fantasy football draft season. It's right around the corner. CD Lamb. Oh wow, they're gonna have a CD's nuts joke. CD Lamb is good, but have you seen? These beautiful balls. They, they okay. So they're listeners of the show. It's true. It's time to get your snake looking right for the snake drift. Wow, incredible! The sponsors today's show, Manscaped, the leaders in below the waist grooming. They've created a championship lineup with their performance package 4.0. Join the six million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get ready for kickoff by going to manscaped.com for twenty percent off. Plus, free shipping inside that performance package 4.0. You'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag. That is, that's literally overwhelming. I am overwhelmed. Tom Brady didn't come out of retirement for you to have hairy balls. It's true. Tom Brady told me told me himself, and I said, fuck you. Whoa, rude. Get 20% off with free shipping with the code GIANTS at manscaped.com. I do think it's one of our best deals, if you ask me. 20% off and free shipping? That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code GIANTS at manscaped.com. It's time to put the PP back in PPP. Nope. Time to put the PP back in PPR and get a grip on your pigskin this season with Manscaped. That was a great, impeccable ad read. And what are you tweeting? John, it's just on Mike Remmers. All right. Or here no. We had a nice conversation with Jordan Renan of ESPN. I thought you said that they did sign Mike Remmers. They should sign him. Do it. Um, so here's Jordan Renan of ESPN. All right. We now welcome on to Talking Giants and on to the big black fan. Um, third member, we had Andrew Thomas, John Smilk, and now Jordan Renan of ESPN. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm well, you know, I feel like a, I'm part of an exclusive group right now. We've, we've done a different like, like setup for everyone. Thomas was on the side. 
Smilk, we I had it in the back seat, and now we got in a row. So the next one, um, we'll figure out. You know, maybe we'll sit in the front seats and have I'm trying to sit up because I next I, person I don't will sit on Bobby's super, lap. Super it'll, short, yeah. I'm it'll like, just I'm have like the I'm camera moving. I'm not on that, on that uh, <laughs> rotation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I was. I came with a third and mm-hmm. not fourth. Clean up has to sit on Bobby's lap. I'm did you bring the heat today, fashion wise? Just for because you, because I called you out and you knew that you would yeah. be coming. So here? this is like an out. This is like a you know twenty. 19. 19 type outfit right here. Like because this, this every is day. something I would have worn in 2019. Every day. Exactly. I might have worn this exact outfit in 2019. Every, every day in 2019, I gave a Jordan Ron on fashion update. And then I and I see that. I was, so that's one of the things I was excited for camp. Evan Neal, Kayvon Thibodeau, Giants offense, Jordan Ron on fashion updates. I mean, yeah, and right you just haven't been bringing sure. it. But I really appreciate Did you see that I'm, I'm trying to kind of just mean, copy content you today? I mean, fashion and eating hot dogs yep, so that far. Is, I mean, they prevented us from taking video. So now I, I eat hot I dogs. I got a lot fashion. of crap for, uh, for the outfit, though, you know, when I posted. Like, Nonsense. It, it was not Ign- met. It was them. not met with overwhelming support. Ignore- it's, it's because you're I not doing Chris it every Canty day anymore. Say something. Yeah, Chris Canny. They said it was only acceptable if I was going to play golf after. Well, now you're which in is band. something I had considered, by the way. But <laughs> do it, do it. Well, this is not, not not exactly. Work. This the schedule hasn't worked out. Yeah. Let's get into some Giants football. We've been at all the practices. Are they practicing tomorrow, or are they have the day off before Fan Fest? Day off before Fan Fest. Okay. Uh, it sounds like they're going to do some sort of scrimmage. Yes. At yeah, Fan Fest, which should be, should be kind of nice because la- I think it was last year. It, it was, was so boring. Bad. It was so <laughs> yeah. boring. Who- uh, and then they're back again on Sunday. Right. Who- who's been your standout so far? My standout so far. A lot of guys have been up and down. Yeah. It's really, you know, there hasn't been a guy. I mean, if I had to pick a standout, I'd say to me, the one guy that I think has looked, although he he's had some bad moments the last couple of days is probably Saquon, but because of health, just to see him yeah. healthy and on the field, like the fact that he's there, that's a, such a big positive for them. I know, I know Brian Dayball was yelling at him today for, uh, he ran the wrong way on, oh, a, I didn't on a running see play. Did you see oh, that? okay. So I was wondering what I was like that. I was like, scrap that play, Brian Dayball. So that well, makes no, sense. Pitch, they they ran the, the same exact play the next play. Okay. Yeah. Pitch to the left. Saquon was he running the, the wrong run. way. Yeah. And we're not allowed to exactly say what, you know what the coaches have said to the players, but I'm just going to paraphrase and say that he told him to uh, wake up and get his act together. Mm, I like that. I like 26, that. Uh, yeah. That was something we were wondering about Brian Dable is what happens when he does need to, you know, get in the dude's ass a little bit, you know, who's been messing up. But Saquon well, half he, looked he's, good. He was known to be like that, especially when he was younger, that he was like a really hard coach and he would get on guys and like, you know, he the MF him and probably like, Similar to what we saw with the judge regime and how they operated, like Brian Dable remembers part of like a lot of those same trees, which is kind of ironic that it, you know he he's he's from the the Belichick tree. He was there for a while. He's went to Alabama and did the Saban thing. Like he, he's yeah, the guy coached under Saban. Belichick and Saban. There's no way he fails here. Yeah, did you see? Have you seen that? Uh, <laughs> there's been like three times that Dable has like really talked to O'Shane Zimenez, and each time has been you're getting yeah. too close to the quarterback. Yeah, so. Would. My, my also, whole... probably when he jumped off sides a couple of times in yeah. that one drill. Yeah, that was, yeah that's been know. fun. Um, with Saquon, I think is one like you said, the athletically he looks great, which last year he didn't. But that's um, the whole big thing with him, right? That's the most important thing. Like you could live with his warts, maybe he could do things as long as he's healthy. Well, even with his warts, like I think the warts will be less ugly this year because the offensive line is actually like doing halfway decent in the run game, where in past years it was just pitiful. You know, they've had their issues in pass blocking, you know, versus Wink's blitzing defense, but it looks like in the run game. It's hard to tell for sure because they don't tackle in the hole. Mm-hmm. Um, but it seems like they're they're moving pretty well, and they've added some athleticism to the offensive line to give spa- uh, give Saquon and even Breida some space. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm having trouble coming up with anyone else who has really stood mm-hmm. out to me consistently. Tony uh, has looked good, but your boy been giving Quincy him- Roche has been good. I got to say, now I the granted, difference is he's playing against this. third string tackles. I was about to say that. So I always say this, and I tell young reporters this all the time: like when you see like pass rushers going off against the second and third team offensive line, you kind of have to take that with a grain of salt because the second and third team offensive tackles in particular aren't even guys that are basically in the NFL. Well, Mm -hmm. our third team one right now has never even played competitive football on Roy (laughs) and Um, (laughs) That is true. So, yeah, you got to take that. But he he has looked good. You can't – and uh, you know what? Leonard Williams has looked like a stud. I mean, Mm -hmm. Leonard Williams has really looked good. Now, granted – when John Feliciano came back today, the interior of the defensive line didn't have their way. And by the way, we're ta- was, was this going to be going today? We're, was, Friday, Friday, right, Friday. So we're taping this on Wednesday. Right. So at the Wednesday practice, John Feliciano came, Feliciano came back, and all of a sudden, 
the interior of the offensive line held up a signi- significantly better than it did the previous few days yeah. when he wasn't in there. Yeah, it was in, it was inoperable with Jameel Douglas. I want to ask you, <laughs> I, I'm I'm about to start forming conspiracy theories. How did John Feliciano miss sev- essentially seven days with hydration issues after one day of practice? Is there more to that story, or is it simply like he just was like I'm not, not going to speculate, but I mean I have the same questions you do, and I think it's fair. And we look at the the dates, and oh, five yeah. more than five days. Uh, I mean, okay. it was after one day of camp, you know, too, where it, you, you wouldn't expect the offensive line to be, you know, dying of hydro. They they didn't weren't they weren't conditioning or anything. Yeah, I, know I, they think, did I think it was more. Before, I think it but, ended up being more of an illness. Yeah, that I guess that would um would make a little more sense. All right, I'm throwing this out there. Is mm-hmm. Richie James making the team? The way I look at Richie James, who by the way, another guy has looked good. Yeah, uh, made plays. He's in that same mold as Tony Wandale. Yeah. Uh, Shep, right where he, that's the wi- that's the wild card in my opinion. Well, that was about to say. I think he's sort of contingency for those three guys. If those three guys are not at you know healthy and ready right. to go, and then it's it's hard to find the spot in my mind. If you're going with him mm-hmm. as like a fourth diminutive guy in, in out of the receiving core, like that's a lot, right? I know yeah. they like to move guys around, but you can only kind of hold so mm-hmm. many. So I think it, it's kind of really contingent on Shep and then also if Wandale and Tony stay healthy. Because Tony already, I mean, there's times where you're just mesmerized by his talent. And there's times where you're like, yeah, I think it was Tuesday. Daniel Jones' first interception, maybe he like slipped a little bit, but he just gave up on the route. He stopped playing at that point. The Theodora Jackson one? Yeah. Yeah, that was – we didn't get to see a great angle of it from the video they put out later, but it's like at least as the ball was thrown, he kind of just stopped on it. But Yeah, um, that, that like kind of stuff like just bothers you. You just yeah. see times where he's just like – Like know, even if it's a bad throw, walks, make yeah, an effort. Just, yeah. he, I don't know. There's just things about him that, that don't always sit right with you. Uh, but, man, that talent is also mesmerizing. At times he went – I think it was against – what's his name? Gavin Haslop. Gavin Heslop. Heslop. Stony Heslop. Brook. That's right. So – you know, Tony's one-on-one drills run, you know, running against Gavin Heslop and, you know, it's not even a contest. Yeah. You're like, come on. And then and, and you're like, we, that's the kind of guy they need to, to play and be a significant player for them. Otherwise they're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. So you, we've had over a week, you guys had OTAs, but now you've had a week straight. What are your initial thoughts on Brian Dable and, and coaching staff so far? Maybe com- you don't have to compare everything to the past ones, but like, what are some things that are sticking out for you? Uh, just the way he operates and handles players in general, he seems to have a very personable uh, demeanor. Like he's able to relate to guys. That he he's able to get, you know, to interact with them in a, in a in a way that that it uh, it works, right? Yeah, a little uh, more genuine, that's rece- authentic. That's, that's receptive. Yeah. Like, uh, also, I mean, his offense is interesting. Also, something I've heard a lot about is the receivers having more freedom. Yeah. And from my understanding of this and be a blessing and, and a curse. But my ble- my no, yeah, true because then guys are running all over the place, you don't know. But my understanding of this is that when they get to the line of scrimmage, they're supposed to basically base it off what they're seeing. You know, okay. their route at that point is based off what they're seeing and then they communicate they communicate that with the quarterback. So I think that really makes players and specifically, I mean, we have guys on this receiver core that at times can look disengaged. I think that might that that really stands out to me. Like that could be a blessing for this team. Now, like you said, it, it could end up working against them if Daniel Jones is throwing a ball to the other team left and right, and Kadarius Tony is running all over the place, and no one knows where the heck he's running, or Kenny Galladay, mm-hmm. or certainly Shepard, whoever. Everybody, really. But that's interesting. I didn't know that because when we hear, like, there's more freedom, sometimes you think of, you know, Kevin Gilbride in route, you know, yeah. you know no, in, no. in play adjustments. So I didn't know that before that these these adjustments are being made at the line of it's, scrimmage. It sounds like it's basically to me, the way it was described to me was that so they get to the line of scrimmage and you're basing it off what you're so – like, like if, if you're a quarterback and you see, okay, we see that they're playing man – uh, where they're playing zone, it's ba- you know this is the kind of you know cover three. We it looks like yeah. like that's where they're basing. Okay, now now I have to run this version of the route. Like maybe they have they go to the line and they have two routes that it's potential. You know, depending on what they see, and okay, this this is what it's going to be. And I assume I haven't talked to Daniel about this specifically, but that he 
you know, sees the same thing and then signals so that they're on the same page. Right. How's the new relationships going? Um, you know, obviously Jeff every two years personable. you gotta you gotta do that. Yeah, I yeah. Know. So so how's uh so how's that going? Well, it's going. I mean, it, this is this is a good camp so far. I mean, bringing back guys like uh, Davis Webb and Andrew Adams is good for the relationship building mm-hmm. as well. Davis Webb hot dogs in guys. practice. Have you noticed that? Like he's sidearm and throwing off oh, his man, back he, foot. He's he just thinks, having fun out he there. Looks like he looks. He's, he's Josh Allen. He feels like he, in his head he is Patrick Mahomes. Like he feels. <laughs> he's like zipping the ball. He's like, let me see what I zip it between my legs or behind my back. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he really is. He's throwing it from all these angles. and He just looks like he's having the time of his life. Like, he knows his role, and he's just going to go out there and have fun with it. But I was watching him throw the, uh, on Wednesday, the one-on-one, you know, the one-on-ones between the DBs and the and the, court, and, uh, the wide receivers. Yeah. And, the wide receivers. and he, he could sling it, though. He still he, he definitely could sling it. He, he could throw the football, mm-hmm. and uh, at, he could look really good when he's standing there in the pocket, just standing there throwing the football. He's got a big arm. but Yeah. Something I we've talked about with the offense has looked better the last two days, but it was really rough to start. Definitely. Do you think they're going to play these guys in preseason, and do you think they should? Based on what we've seen so far, I mean, Kenny Galladay, Kadarius, Tony, these guys are already having, like, maintenance days. Yeah. And what we saw this spring, it's hard for me to see Brian Dable coming out and being a huge preseason guy with these guys in particular. Yeah. I, I just, with but the, with the new, gods, you need it, you know? With yeah. the new it's office. Just a, yeah. yeah. Just and, a balance. And a, another thing is you're facing Wink Martindale every day without game planning for Wink Martindale. It's like you got to see a different look than all-out blitzes and, you know, realizing, like, hey, you know what? We don't have to get rid of the ball super quick when we're playing this team compared to, you know, it's just – you well, know, here's the question, especially What's, with a new offense. Here's the question: What is the sp- what is the the preseason playing time look like these days anyway? Right, because this is what the second year of the three preseason games. Like, like how are teams essentially decide? Yeah. Have they decided to handle that? I think game one is basically like no one's going to play. Yeah, it, it's game two they kind of play, and game three game is three like they, the old. They play, the, yeah. yeah, the old game three the old, where they play the like old a half. Game three, yeah, yeah, the old game three still is is the game three, but. So the guys that get screwed are the the end of the roster guys yeah. because there's real no game four yeah. except for the first game of the preseason, which is you really much fear those guys. You want to have it at the end, right before. Yeah, yeah. But Judge totally didn't give them anything game one and game two, where like Pat Shermer, the but everybody was also injured with Judge last year. Like he couldn't put them on the field. Like Galladay was injured, Tony was injured, sure, but uh, Jones Saquon never threw the ball. And Saquon until... was injured. Like, yeah. But who do you, is it? Was it even worth it at that point? He would have played Jones, by the way. But I, when Jones is going to go out there with the whole second team and the, third teamers the out there, yeah. what's the point? Of, what was the point at that point of putting Daniel Jones out there? Yeah, it's just especially with the QB, you're not getting hit. Like that's something that I wish they would call more sacks in practice. It's like I've noticed Tyrod Taylor is the king of this is a sack by like three seconds, and he just throws it. Yeah, and it's a beautiful ball, and it leads to like a great highlight play. And then Jones has had those too, where Jones is just holding on to the ball, holding on to the ball. So I just feel like some live bullets. Where you know, Shermer played the first team. Uh, like a couple, a couple series. The first game, a quarter. The second game, and the third game is when they Schumer, got Schumer, as Odell used to call. Him. Yeah, mm. Schumer. Did you Schumer. hear uh, what Tony calls Dayball? Oh, what is he? What is he oh, I the ball, the ball. Yeah, well, like like <laughs> of course that's, I heard that's that. the ball. <laughs> I, I, so we got fantastic. It, 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 this is like the modern day Schumer. Did you Odell notice Odell Tony was trying to be more professional in his last presser, but just couldn't help but cut up a little bit. I was I was actually doing something Any comment else on that? at the time that I avoiding that, that, I, that I didn't uh, I didn't catch most of his presser live. Wow! I caught it afterwards, but it's just the way these things work out. Sometimes they bring someone out, or you mm-hmm. had to go do an interview one on one. Yeah, and so do you I, find to I'm be a, a huge uh, like oh Kadarius Tony press conference? I need to ask him a question. No, I mean like for your 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 brain, do I need to be, like Jordan Runnon needs to be there? I like to, yeah, yeah. I think so, in a way. Yeah, I think he's not going to answer it. Your your ego always, you know, everyone has an ego. That's true. You, you want you want I, to I got one. say hey, and also I like guys to see me and look me in the face and mm. know that uh, you know I'm around all the time. Like, yeah, I think right. that's important. That I'm not. You never want to be. And I, I tell guys this all the time. That's just kind of like my pitch to players is like, when you play poorly, I'm going to write you play poorly. It's out there. Everybody sees it. If you play well, I'm going to write you play well. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, is what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to snipe you from a distance. Right. So I'm going to be there, and I'm going to ask you about something you did poorly or something you did wrong. Like I'm not just going to not be the guy who's too scared to ask the question, sit in the back, and then write a scathing article crushing the guy, mm-hmm. and he'd be like, 
That guy didn't even ask me about it. Yeah. Right? You never yeah. want to leave them the opportunity to say that. So now, that's now, why, that's my that's usually my thinking of like a, why I want to be there yeah. and I want to make sure. Like I don't want to write about it having not been there. Right. Right. Now, somebody who took offense to uh, you saying that they played poorly a couple years ago was Eric Flowers, right? We've talked about this before. Um, yeah, is, uh, is Evan Neal basically Eric Flowers so far this camp? He's, he's struggled. I'm asking this with the, this is a sarcastic question before you get yeah, well, there. You've been, <laughs> at, you you know, in trouble. No, you've been at camps <laughs> with a rookie, Andrew Thomas. You know, uh, like, what do you, th- for a guy who was more of like a clean prospect, like people called Andrew Thomas the most pro ready, it infuriated me. He just had the best results in the SEC. He wasn't the most pro ready. But Neal was a, a more clean prospect than Thomas. Like, do you think there's cause for concern that? Like that's that's my thing. Is there cause for concern that he's gonna have a bad rookie season? That maybe this isn't you know it yeah. would be a disappointment in year three. Like I really don't know. I and don't he know. could Where be a you disappointment. Guys stand on this. I mean, it's so early. Yeah. I don't want to overreact yeah. to it, but I also have to at least acknowledge it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, that's where that's I'm where at right now. At it's too, like yeah. it's like I just I I kind of expected him to come in here and be be like already a good me too and, and, and so i'm like looking at it okay well you know like he is a rookie we got to sit here and wait yeah. we're not even at the first preseason game like you know maybe these are just early growing pains yeah. we'll see but it's definitely something you got to acknowledge, acknowledge at this point yeah, yeah he's been he's, a, it's been a rough start yeah, but you shouldn't look, have, trust me a lot of rookies have had rough starts a lot of rookies have been fine and at the same time there's some rookies that you see right away, and you're like, "Holy cow, this guy is just not good enough." Yeah, yeah. can I can I tell you where my brain's at? You know, maybe if Let's you want to, maybe if you want to throw, throw, throw this around go. in the in the building. Let's hear. Um, you know, I think Evan Neal has done something very di- no, maybe not very different, but kind of different technique wise, thousands and thousands of times. You know, going away from those vertical sets at at Alabama and stuff like that, and Bobby Johnson. You know, jump set. Uh, yeah, those Mr. those jump, jump sets, set. 45 degrees, whatever. So. Uh, at least from what I think and what I'm seeing is that that's a, the the thing that he's struggling with, kind of moving his feet. So, you know, hey, if you ever see Evan Neal, be like, how's that adjustment going? You know? Yeah, I'd you know, that. big Duke, big Duke Mannyweather. That's just that's his guy. So, well, that would be the nice thing is that even if Evan Neal sucks, Duke Mannyweather will be defending him no matter what. Mm. So, <laughs> um, look, the national look, looking forward to get Duke Mannyweather on the Giants beat uh, this year with Evan Neal. Um, no, but it's good to get context at this point of like saying, okay. Wh- what do we think is going on here? What would you? What are you going to tell him? What would you tell him? What do you, you know? How how does this get correct? Right. Yeah. So it, it's it's because if he doesn't, because then then we're back kind of at square. The expectation is now, for, these off these tackles have to be good. Yeah. Ex, the expectation is Evan Neal to not not this year, but eventually to be a great player. Not a not a good player, but to be a great player. Um. So obviously you'd like to see him come along, but like like you said, we've had a, my we've had expectation a this year is that he's a serviceable. Tackle, yeah, like which quality is quality tackle, yeah. which is fine. Absolutely, he's not a, a complete uh, liability. Highs and lows, have some highs and lows. Uh, and again, it's it's one week of practice, but it has been noticeable. Like he's he's had some struggles, and not just versus Kayvon Thibodeau versus guys like O'Shane Zimenez and Jihad Ward, and, and, and yeah, even Jihad Ward. Beat so, him around the edge. And we haven't happen. even seen Aziz. You know that that's the guy he's. What's what? Have you heard anything more. on that? Like when can we expect the Aziz back? I don't think, or? It, I don't think it's that far off. Uh, yeah. I mean, unless there's, there's always you never want to say that for sure because there's always a potential mm-hmm. for a setback when guys are, especially with a hamstring. Tony Award. It looks like a two man race between you and Art. I'm thinking about. So I'm at. So wait, I, there's no repeat winners in that. No. Well, it's like the good guy award. Okay. You can't get it. You can't win it for like Same two rules. or three years. Same rules apply. <laughs> um, we'll you know we'll see who NJ.com produces. I don't think Connor Hughes will win it. Um, Tough. It's going to be a little late for the NJ.com guy to start and win that. Yeah, he'd have be, to really. It'll be, be an uphill battle. I mean, this is a serious award we're Absolutely. talking about. Yeah, he'd have to really can't kiss just our show ass. Up and, can't just show up in October and have a chance for this award. And no. If he does, kind of makes, you know, yeah, he, he have to, devalues this award if he does. He'd have to just write like a full article on Talking Giants and, and who we are for to get consideration. <laughs> I'm thinking about changing the voting system to not a. First place, second place, third place votes, but just whoever like gets the most. puts that out there. Like, hey, I want to ask. a story idea mm-hmm. for this new NJ.com uh, writer. Hey, hey. <laughs> it's what, out there. What do you think? Should you think that there should be three points for first place, two points for second, and then one for third place votes, or just whoever gets the most first place votes? I could go either way. You could sell You would benefit the one. most from you the would. just first place votes. Yeah. Because Art is going to get top three votes from everybody. Yeah. There's a lot of people who hate you that are not going to put you in their top three, but you'll get a lot of first place Tough. votes too. True. So in that case, because I'm all about me, 
I'm going to vote for first place votes being all that matters. Okay. So we'll see. You know, it's it's. Uh, we have time. We'll, we'll we'll consult with the committee. What do what do you? What was it last year? It was first, second, and third. First, right? second, yeah. and third. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are, are we uh, leaning towards a change? Is it? Just, I don't you're know. just offering it to me because you're telling me I, I'm screwed if I don't get it changed? Well, w- w- voting is whenever you guys vote on the good guy award. Um, so we'll, we'll see. I, but I, I kind of want to change Usually the like first. Usually like a couple weeks before the season ends. That's, that's when yeah, I, yeah. So like uh, ours is called deal, the though. not sure if you're a good person um Award, but you know, good. Best you no, know, I'm reporter, willing so. to admit usually that I'm not a good person. Though. Yeah, so I'm we want it to willing. be just. I admitted that all the time in the locker room. Yeah, the so, award has nothing to do with that. Yeah, so we don't okay. care if you could be, you know, the worst person. All, you know, um, I won't throw you under anybody, any of your colleagues. Under uh, the don't, bus, don't but you could compare. be the worst person alive. But as long as you're yeah. a good reporter, um, we'll get you on there. Uh, you have one more question. Yeah, we're asking everybody this record prediction for the 2022 New York Giants. You're asking me for my record prediction right now. Yeah, try try and give a definitive one. So because we're because we're gonna make. John Smeal gave us don't care, and I was like, okay, but what's your total? I'm putting. I'm making a graphic. And then he said over wait. under six and a half. Still wouldn't give us an answer. Cannot wait to put his bald head on a graphic. I mean, with he, the, wor- I don't he care. works for the organization. That's a t- yeah, he can't. He says I don't care, and I but love he that. can't come out here and be like. Four and thirteen. Well, he could say six and eleven. I don't think two people in the building. He be could too say mad at something him. other than I don't care. Paul Dettino <laughs> would give us one. He would. <laughs> no chance. Six, seventeen, and zero. We would yeah. give you <laughs> sixteen and one. They'll rest their starters the last week of the season. <laughs> uh, sh- I think six and eleven is a good number. Okay, I think that's where everyone's landed. I was nope. mine. That's what Arch Stapleton's was. Eight. Um, Dan Eight, Benton had eight. Yeah. So, and by the way, it's only six because their their schedule is kind of favorable. If they had a really tough schedule, it would be tough to get to six, but. There's games against what Texans. Uh, there's Bears, a month. There's a month stretch where Lions, we should not lose a game. <laughs> uh, Jaguars. Well, all those teams are looking at the Giants as a potential win. Yes, yes. Mean, that's that. don't that's play. what that's my goal for the Giants. though, this year is, and I've, I've said Eagles. this on every not interview, be that team as being the team that beats those teams instead of the teams that, that those teams beat. Like, do we think? Do we think? I mean, seriously, I don't know what you guys think. I have an opinion on this. Do you think that the Giants roster is better than the Carolina Panthers roster? No. I don't either. Don't know. There's, better, there's better. There's certain important spots that's better, like offensive line, uh, which is crazy They've to say. They've better. Actually, but Baker but Mayfield is a, Baker Mayfield is a solid upgrade over Sam Darnold, where Sam Darnold yeah. was just atrocious. I mean, but that's still their question mark too. Is at that quarterback position? Yeah, but do, but do they have enough? But they have like their defense is pretty good. Oh yeah, so and they like, got I look you know, at Brian them. Burns. But, on my the point edge. is, everybody looks at them and say the Giants should win. We was it two? We yes. two. They, two yeah. they need to be. They should be Carolina. And they're, they're actually yeah. going. I think they're favored. They're I also th- favored. I also barring think some whatever happens. Home, home, home teams are always the favorite. In Vegas. Um, record not prediction. They, they get. They get three yeah, I know points. They get the three points, but record predictions. Giants everyone forgets favorite. that there's any health issues that are going to happen out throughout the year too. That's like, the problem. The Giants are so thin. When you talk about the so DB group, spots. it's not great. But that's when our point is like you know, Adore Jackson and Aaron Robinson both missed games last year, and this year if that happens. It's just a disaster. Like they, they, they are one cornerback injury away from just being a total disaster in the DB. That to me is one of the most glaring things of training camp. Is there would they have at the cornerback position? Like depth their backups are is, horrible. Like horrible. I, you you can't even if I we go to a random giant fan and name them the second team cornerbacks, they'll be like. Who I've been who? here. Have you heard and us who? yelling at the random players to see if we get a reaction? Like you're like, let's go, Ryder Anderson. Ryder Anderson and, and has my get, go, been has been my go to player that I yell his name every day. Trying to get a me. trying to get a reaction out of the most like because you know those guys are probably never get cheered on for the rest of their life. But here's this but here's my a, point this about is, this. This is how the roster. I mean, you're listing guys I barely know. Yes, but here's my point about this. I we've been here every single day. Of training camp, and I have made somewhat of a concerted effort to try and learn the backup secondary players besides Cordell Flott. I cannot do it. I, Ro- my brain Michael just cannot Jaquette, do it. Rodarius besides today. Michael Jaquette because he has a fun name. Davin yeah. Heslop was who's number who's number thirty one. He was out there. With the who's forty four? Oh, oh <laughs> God, I know him. Uh, he's from the Ravens. <sighs> Who is I this? I can't remember his name. That's piss- Zion Gilbert is one name. Zion Gilbert is 38. Yes. That was the next one I was going to ask you. 31 and 38 were working with the second team uh, the other uh, day. 31, Khalil Dorsey. 31 is, there a you sl- go. is a slot corner. Khalil yeah. Dorsey. Backup yeah. slot corner. And then Flot was out too, so it was like Zion Gilbert 
FAU's, uh, FAU's uh, Khalil the Dorsey FAU. and Michael and, Jaquette. And, yeah, well, Michael Jaquette actually has been going the wrong way on the depth chart. Which yeah, doesn't, he started with second doesn't team. Doesn't now he's with the well team. Yeah. talking about that group right there. All right, but don't care. Wednesday's practice was fun. The offense was great, so uh, Giants are back. Are you coming to our Fan Fest okay. event? That's yes, today. The, uh, when this comes out, it'll be today. So are you coming? Parking lot G, free food. There's good. There is good good going to be more food this I year. Have a, I have a. And we got I, loudspeakers for the show. There this is. Year. It's a. I'm a big question mark because I'm actually uh, hosting national ESPN radio from twelve to three. Wow, huge. So then I have to leave from home. I live about an hour from here. This is true. So yes. now we're getting tight on time. Now, if I get here. It, that's a tough time to drive. Like, am I really going to be here at four on the dot? Probably Parkway not. Parkway North is tough. I'm talking four thirty. You know, late. I got to start. I got to be inside. Like, yeah. You know what you should do is the last twenty minutes. Just phone us in, and we'll just do the last twenty minute segment for you. Yeah, we can do that. I I actually the first time that I, I was think on the that radio would go over very well. The we're first giving time you a lot of we, ideas. We were, we've to, been on the radio before. This. Bobby made a Bobby made an Al Qaeda joke on the radio last year. Um, no you, Taliban. Excuse me, Taliban. You want to make sure that you um, never get this opportunity. This is the story. Well, I, I said last year we. They, <laughs> this is the story you tell. If you want to never. I was get in the parking lot when I was on the radio. New York radio the last year we were we did a WFAN spot did, and I said another the station that doesn't over. exist. Um, we did it with Sean Marash. It was on a on a Sunday. It was before the preseason. So nobody noticed. Um, did they wow, noticed. Well, harsh. We, no, they no, noticed. I'm just saying, like the bosses. Uh, that's like the, yeah, if you want to say something, notice. the bosses might True. not be there. Probably put not put on listening on a Sunday morning. We put said the David weekend. Sills army is stronger than the Taliban, and that was like when yes. the Taliban was like. Like they were doing. They some were taking over that airport, things. so it was yeah. it was relevant at the time. <laughs> um, all right, that's Jordan Ronovi. <laughs> wait, I, I didn't get the answer. To how to go over? Did oh, it well, just fine. go? I mean, we got just, tweets thinking it was hilarious. Did but, it just? Did it just slide by like nobody noticed? Yeah, I mean, Sean Marash is still our friend, so I think I guess it yeah. went. I guess it went halfway decent. Yeah, he didn't get fired. the producer's name Peter Rosenberg, which confused me. Uh, yeah, wait, the producer. The producer Peter? of that Sean Marash show was named Peter Rosenberg. A different Peter and that uh, no 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 no, Rosenberg. no relation to yeah, Peter Rosenberg. No relation. All right, that's an ep- or not an episode. That's an interview. Which that's an on interview. ESPN. Go check out uh, ESPN.com if you haven't heard it. The Breaking Big Blue podcast. And uh, wh- where else can people find you? Twitter, uh, Instagram, TikTok. Facebook, TikTok. I mean, you guys are active TikTokers now too. We are, are we? I, I haven't posted to three. Are we putting stuff on TikTok? Oh, sugar. We need to do. We need to make sure the practice recaps are on TikTok. Shout out Bear Burger. We should we we're gonna have to do we should do like a TikTok dance. We with can do three that. of us so with that. Yeah. Yes. No. I Bobby, us, us too. Bobby, I will yeah. do. Yeah. I will do. Yeah. I will do a lot of things for views. I'm not doing the dancing videos. <laughs> I eat hot dogs for views. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> that's something you need to just rack right there. Giants and don't. Say that I eat hot dogs for views. Giants don't allow us to film practice anymore. I need to do something. All right. That's that, an interview. That's an interview. All right. Thank you, Jordan Renan. That makes buying tickets super simple. We've got the app on our phones. We used it to buy Yankees tickets the other day. True, um, Great seats. And that Knicks tape page, like Knicks tape 99, I know he had like 30,000 followers. He quote tweeted it. Call him out. And I just told him like to, you know, Ligma. Like, cause uh, mm. don't, don't talk trash about the tickets that Renato got us. They were great. T- they literally were great tickets. Like Beautiful. At, at first I was like, oh, these are really high, but high behind home plate is might you be the best everything. seat in the house. Um, That's what I try to tell everyone. I tried to tell you at the start of baseball season. Bobby whether, Skinner got to experience Whether it. it's football concerts, basketball, baseball festivals, or more, SeatGeek puts tickets from all over the web in one place to make buying simple. SeatGeek rates every ticket from 0 to 10 to make sure you're getting a good deal. Green means good. Red means bad. Every ticket on SeatGeek is ba- backed by their buyer guarantee so you can shop for tickets with confidence. Don't worry. We've got the hookup. Use code GIANTS for $20 off at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code GIANTS. Make sure you click on the link in the description to download the app. All right, thanks again, Jordan Renan of ESPN, for coming on the show. Uh, we're actually going to be on his show probably next week sometime, so make sure you to check that out. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, give him some good reviews saying, you know, have those guys on again. Whenever. There was a fun little Jordan Ronan Breaking Big Blue, like, game that he played, like a segment, and Bobby Skinner hates that shit. I did hate that segment. Like, it was... I loved it. It's like, here's a... It, Here's a, you, you like the seven like best players on the team. Date them or dump them. Date them or dump them, and there's no nuance in the conversation. No. So I, quick, I, easy, fun. You don't like fun. I truly hated that segment because it's like I'm, I'm going to say dump somebody, but there's going to be no nuance to it. <sighs> All right. Um, 
that's an episode. Come to our Fan Fest event if you're listening to this on Friday. If you didn't, if you're not coming, I, I really do think you're going to mix out, miss out, man. There's going to be a lot of heavy hitters out there besides ourselves. Licensed Plate Guy and Entertain at Clem is coming. The Big Blue Banter guys are coming. Uh, I'm not a heavy hitter anymore because I'm not heavy anymore. El Jefe and the uh, New York Giants Revival. Uh, Craig at NY, uh, New York Giants Rush. We got, we got a lot of guys, uh, a lot of people coming out there. Um, in fact, we're going to do a fun camp, ser- uh, camp series out of out of it. So live show, in free food. We appreciate you guys. Um, we'll see you tomorrow, Fan Fest live show. Until yeah. then, let's go Big Blue.